Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about these odd orbits maiden with the INAV conversion. Now, let's get started here. Now, if you've been watching my channel, we did build this on the channel. And I've designed a couple 3D printed parts for this in order to build it and execute it as clean as possible. At the same time, keep in mind the center of gravity and just to make it very easy to adjust if needed to. All right, so let's talk about some of the components here. Now, I use the Maytek F405 wing, as you can tell right there. It's on the bottom here. The R9 receiver, a HLRC GPS. I'm still waiting on my Matic GPSs. Now this GPS is okay. It actually took a while to pick up the GPS lock, but the uh, what is it called? The uh, the Matic GPSs picks up lock in insanely quicker. Like I just place it, plug in the battery. By the time I put my goggles on, it already locked to like a bunch of uh, satellites. So this took a while to get its uh, satellites uh, connected here. For the VTX, we're using the AKK VTX, which I had a, a slight crash with, and I kind of broke the MMCX a little. It didn't. It just came loose. So I have to fix that. And uh, for the antenna, I use this Pagoda 2 from Gep RC. Really good antenna. And I've designed all these 3D printed parts. If you missed it, go ahead and check my previous video. Now, let's talk about this. Now, currently, the, the flight was really nice with iNav. Actually, I got it to work just perfect from the beginning. I did have a couple crashes. And the reason for those in the beginning was because I had launch control set up incorrectly. So what I will do right now is we're going to go over the iNav settings that I went ahead and... Um, set up and I'll also leave the dump to the INAV settings if you wanted uh, to use those. However, there is no tune or PID tuning done in the configuration. It's all default. I didn't have to do anything. And even if I wanted to do anything, it was windy. So it's not really recommended to do anything. Uh, but overall, it was flying really nice. It does need a little bit of trimming, but I couldn't really get many flights out because it was way too cold that day. It was like negative four. Now, in terms of efficiency, Around 60% throttle, it'll fly close to, I think, 70 kilometers or 60 kilometers per hour, which is really good. You kind of want to keep this over 50. The amount of amps it was pulling is anywhere between 4 and 6 amps, which is really good. So if we drop the, the throttle down slightly and then just, you know, move along with the wind, uh, we should gain really good speed and a lot of efficiency. This thing should theoretically fly for a very, very long time and also a very far distance. However, my first tests were with the lipos and if you again if you've been watching my channel i do have lithium ion packs for this uh that can withstand the amount of current that this thing is going to be pulling because the the the, the lithium ion packs that i have are rated for 6c constant discharge that means six times 3000 milliamps so i have plenty of room without worrying about too much voltage sag or ruining my lithium ion packs which is something really nice now i'm very curious to see what is the longest flight time i can do with this i did try to go for a mini one i didn't fly this far just yet because i am still building trust in it it's only been the first couple of flights and as time goes on uh, I'll be pushing it further and further and you'll see that on the channel, but I only use the lipo. I use this little lipo here right now. The CG was perfect, especially with this 3D printed part. That was really awesome. And uh, the, 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 again, the temperature was very low, it was like negative four degrees. So I can't really, even if I wanted to keep flying as long as I wanted to, it wouldn't be a real test because the battery performance does degrade in very low temperatures. And that's something you need to take note of, especially now in winter. So I didn't use the lithium ion packs for this test yet. Uh, that will be in the upcoming days. Hopefully we'll have sun tomorrow and I can't wait to take this out again and flying it. So let's jump over to INAV settings. I'll just take a quick look at what I did and I'll also leave the dump down below if you want to go ahead and check that out. So yeah, let's jump to the PC and we'll take it from there. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at the INAV settings. Now, the first thing you want to do is, is the calibration. And this calibration sequence is uh, very important to take note of something. Now, if you noticed when I built my Zod Orbit, the arrow on the flight controller was not straight, like pointing to the front of the plane. And when you do this calibration, you don't do this by the, uh, by the front of the airplane. You do this by the arrow on your flight controller. So when, you, when it says to go to step three and point it to the right here, you have to point the flight controller's arrow to the right. Forget how your quadcopter or your airplane is pointing just by the flight controller here so it can calibrate everything. And that's what I did here and it just saves and reboots and you're good to go. Mixer, the mixer I've set it up like so, which is 80, 80, 80, negative 80. Usually it's 50, but, um, and you need to take note of this 
orientation or this order that I've done it when I pitch when I use my stick to pitch down or to, when on the receiver when I push down I want the uh, airplane to actually pitch up so I like it inverted kind of like in video games you know like PlayStation 3 and Xbox that's how I've been used to playing those so that's how I fly mine um, I don't press up and I want it to go up when I press up I will or pitch up I want it the, the plane to actually put its nose down so this is kind of inverted this is the way that I like to fly it here uh, forget the presets i had the uh what is it we had the uh, s bus on uart2 which is that's how it is and gps i set it up on uart6 here at 9,600 9, 9, uh baud rate here and gps it doesn't have auto like uh beta flight so take that into consideration also now here what you have to do is you do have to enable the motor and servo output or you won't get anything anywhere and uh, for GPS, look, as you can tell here, yeah, this is very important, the board sensor alignment. Now, because my arrow was not pointing forward, I set up a 90 degree yaw alignment here in order to keep it to actually get the, the thing to fly. So keep an eye on the arrow on your flight controller and set this up accordingly to where you have set it. Now, if we go down here, I left everything here default, default. And uh, what I also changed here was just enable GPS, U blocks auto detect and then just left it as is right there and that's what i did right here just craft name and uh permanently enable air mode you want to keep that on profile selection with tx i haven't used that and i don't know how to use it and i don't think i need to use it osd obviously i want osd and uh, telemetry telemetry output and enable cpu based serial ports i just left those default i didn't change anything down there uh if we go to self fail safe i set it up to return to home and uh pit tuning i left it default i didn't change anything and if we go to advanced here, I changed a couple things. Uh, climb before return to home. Oh, this is why it wasn't climbing so high. Okay, because you want this to be 70,000 centimeters, which means it's roughly, uh, it would be, or 65,000, which would be 65 meters, basically. And I should actually save this. I'll save this in a little bit later. And what I'll also do is land after return to home. I never set that up. I always say never because uh, where I am, there's a street next to me. So I don't want it to land at all. So I set that up to never and then uh, to here you say at least, you know, 65 meters here when you return to home. This is for multi rotors. It's kind of, I guess, the same thing. Uh, position estimator. I didn't touch any of that. This is very important here. Now the cruise throttle, this is the throttle that it will be flying when you set it return to home or to do some kind of a waypoint when it's basically controlling itself or loiter mode this is very important so basically this means the cruise throttle now if for example you had a really low kv and you set it up at 50 percent throttle which is a thousand five hundred then uh and, and your plane is just losing speed then it's just going to stall and fall out of the uh the sky so here what you have to do is you can change this in the osd which is really nice um and it saves you a lot of time also it's called cruise throttle. This is very important, especially when you're testing return to home. And for some reason, when you return to home, is just uh, it's just losing a lot of speed and it's just not as powerful as you want it to. Then you would increase this either here or inside the OSD. And again, it's called cruise throttle. Min and max throttle. I never touch these. I just leave them the way they are. Uh, I leave it all this default loiter. This is a uh, to the the circle to have it just keep spinning and basically position hold or when it comes uh to to when it's returned to home and it gets right on top of its air it'll just loiter i mean just spin in that area and um it's five thousand centimeters is basically five meters <clears throat> sorry about that receiver you know the just your receiver stuff i didn't do anything there my modes obviously you're gonna have to change it if you're gonna use my dump this is how i set it up uh altitude hold position hold return to home now you have something called uh where is it Auto launch, I wasn't having good chance with a good, good, uh, I wasn't, it wasn't really working great for me. It needs more uh, tuning uh, to get this just to work just right. Auto tune is really nice to have. Uh, this basically, you just set up auto tune on a switch and then you just keep, you know, banking to the right, banking to the left, pitching up and down. It'll introduce a lot of latency and you'll trip out, but don't worry. That's what it does. It's just calculating how to tune it for you. And once that's done, it doesn't save. Once you land, don't plot your battery before popping into the OSD and saving it because it'll save all the new values for your tune. Uh, let's see here. I didn't touch any of these. I didn't touch any of these. Nothing on GPS. Mission control, nothing. Motor, just calibrate. You should, pretty, you should probably know how to calibrate. OSD, you can set up what you want to see. This is how I like to see it. I keep my, uh, long, my, my GPS coordinates on the bottom. So when I upload the video, I just cut the bottom of the video here so you guys don't see where I am. 
Um, not that it matters, but I just, yeah, I just, that's how I do LED strip. I don't have LED strip, nothing else. I didn't do anything else. And, uh, I'll give you my settings here, just dump. And then what you want to do, if you want the same settings, but just make sure you change your modes. That's very important. Also, as you just take a copy of all of these here, just like to right there, dump, copy it. And if you wanted my settings, you just go in here, paste everything. You won't see anything, but if you press up, you'll start seeing everything kind of, or no, you don't actually. You just want to paste everything in here and then press enter. I'll show you that right now. So this is what it does here. Come on. There we go. You go to CLI, paste my list. You won't see anything once you paste it. Press enter and then you'll see it do all of these settings as you can tell here. And once that's done, you want to go ahead and type save and then enter. But once it's done, as you can tell, it's working. So this is how you would set up the my configuration for some reason you wanted it. Let's just disconnect because I don't want to save that. <clears throat> all right and um that's that's really it i mean i didn't have to do anything so um yeah you just go over the settings i'm still also new to inav so don't think i know everything everything here this took this always takes me a while to set up the servo mixer just correctly and uh if you build it the same way i built it and you like your pitch and you ought to be inverted then uh, i find this to be really good settings and this is what i set it up on i don't know if, if i just put everything 80 everything that works perfect for me always has a weight of 80 so that's what i've been doing and uh, as time goes on, obviously, I'll know a little bit more about this, but I'm finding it just perfect to fly. I'm not having any issues. And it does already give you some expo as a default, which is really nice. It smoothens out your flight. And um, yeah, it, that's it's it's really simple. Just, you know, just the first time you ever do it, it's just going to take some time here. And these are very important here. So navigation is safe. No, this will never let you arm because there's no GPS lock. Hardware health is uh, X, which means... Not all the sensors are on because obviously there's no battery power. Once I plug in the battery power, then uh, this will be a check. However, navigation is safe. It will still be unsafe because obviously there's no GPS lock inside the, the, the shop here. And But once I'm in the, you know, in the field or outside, it'll pick up and then it'll just allow you to, uh, to go ahead and arm and then fly. Uh, so overall, it was a really good build and you'll see more of it and I'm just gonna let you guys with the FPV footage And I really hope you guys enjoy it and uh, I'll be making a lot more update videos If you guys want to see more on this and maybe we can go even a little bit further detail into this setup and um, yeah I'll have the my dump linked down below so you can go ahead and use my settings if you wanted to just make sure you do the calibration first and then you set up your mixer and then I think that's really it. And then after that, oh, you also have to enable here this, this first. You have to just, I think, enable this after. You'll, it'll tell you what you need to do. All right, guys. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll leave a link to everything I use down below. And my, my settings and everything will be linked down below. And I'll leave you guys with the flying footage. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.